Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're gonna briefly break down how Liverpool overcame Scholzgar's tactics to claim three points and extend their lead at the top of the Premier League table. But before we do that, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on our road to 3K subscribers. When we break down the game and look at the board, this was all about how Manchester United would look to potentially disrupt Liverpool and that's how they decided to implement their tactics. It's what we've seen them often do in the big games, 3-4-1-2, look to close down their opponents across the pitch, and then try to find space in transition to break on the counterattack. The first part of that did work to a T in the opening half, where they were able to disrupt Liverpool, and the manner in which they were able to do that was by pressing high up the front, ensuring that the fullbacks can't get on the ball in deeper positions to act as creative outlets, and be able to man mark across the pitch. What we end up seeing there is Daniel James and Anthony Martial looking to close down Gomez and Van Dijk. And if Henderson looked to split the center backs, what we would see there is Andreas Pereira was given the duty of sitting on Jordan Henderson and closing him down in that aspect. So if you have those central positions blocked out of the game, combined with Matic stepping to Oxley chamberlain and having Fred stick into the path of Wijnaldum, then that leaves the fullbacks free to get on the ball and dictate. But what Scholzgaard instructed his wing backs to do here was get Juan Basaka and Brandon Williams into higher positions to close down the fullbacks whenever they received the ball. And we did see that there. So when the fullbacks received the ball, you would see Williams and Juan Basaka push forward, and that would leave the front three against Manchester United's back three. Yes, that is a risky situation, but you fancy your chances if they do look to play the ball higher up the pitch for Maguire or Lindelof to win those aerial duels and hope that Shaw could hold off Mo Salah until support does come across. So that was a task that Manchester United handed to Liverpool. Let us press high, break us down that way, and Manchester United did a very good job of closing down Liverpool in those zones. When you really break down Liverpool's chances in that first half, none of them did stem from open play. They were able to go ahead from an Alexander-Arnold's corner that Van Dijk rose above Brandon Williams and Maguire to not in. But besides that, Liverpool struggled to create chances from open play based off United's pressing in higher positions. And even when Liverpool were able to push forward, they still closed down in that manner and they struggled to create chances. The only time where they were able to get into good goal scoring positions was when they opted to go long. When we look to the two examples that they did create, one of them did see Daniel James gamble and step to Allison, and that created space for a 2v1 with Allison and Van Dyke, and Van Dyke was able to clip a long diagonal ball over Brandon Williams for Salah breaking into that right channel. So Salah ends up picking up the ball against Sean, Brandon Williams does recover, but what happens there is that Wijnaldum made a forward run and Firmino started his run from a deeper position, so as everyone is recovering in towards that box, Salah locates Firmino breaking towards the box and he pulls it back, but Firmino can't get a shot on goal but that was one of the few openings where they were able to get into a good position and it stemmed from a long ball and the only other example where we did see Liverpool get into a good position that forced David De Gea into a save also stemmed from a long ball it was an Allison punt in towards Manchester United's half and Maguire did end up winning the header but he nodded it into the path of Firmino who was ahead of Luke Shaw and he nodded the ball into the path of Salah who was able to turn across Maguire when he did receive the ball he was already kind of pinched towards the right of Maguire, so he had that head start. And when he pinches and receives the ball, Maguire's taken out of the game. That forces Lindelof to shift over, and it leaves Mane free. And that's where Juan Basaka, who was high, not picking up Robertson, should be able to read that and drop off deeper to cover for Lindelof, who was forced to shift over. Because if he doesn't shift over, that lets Salah in free on goal. But he doesn't shift over. We end up seeing the ball played into Mane and Mane is able to break free towards goal but he fires a low effort on goal and it forces a wonderful save from David De Gea.
On the other hand, given Manchester United's shape, Liverpool also pressed very high, and it also followed a similar scheme. What we ended up seeing there was the front three closing the back three. So we would see Salah stepping to Luke Shaw, Firmino stepping to Maguire, and Mane pushing into the path of Lindelof. Robertson and Alexander-Arnold would push high. The midfield battle would be set with Henderson actually pinching a bit. So we would see Oxlade-Chamberlain stepping to Matic, Wijnaldum stepping to Fred, but perhaps given the fact that Liverpool didn't see Andreas Pereira's threat in the number 10 role in that final third, they allowed Henderson to push forward and kind of pinch so that if any balls did get beyond Oxlade-Chamberlain or Wijnaldum, Henderson was there to step into challenges and sweep up danger. And they were totally comfortable with Gomez and Van Dijk against Martial and Daniel James. Still, when we do assess it, United did get into some good positions based off of Liverpool Pool's defensive lapses and given the fact that they had the midfield runners in Matic and Fred pushing forward and offering some sort of threat with their ball carrying skills. When we look to one example, it's Juan Basaka throwing the ball into the path of Fred ahead of Wijnaldum and they play a quick one-two and Juan Basaka is able to get the ball back ahead of Mane who doesn't track that run. So Juan Basaka pushes forward and he looks to drive at Henderson and with Oxley chamberlain coming across, Juan Basaka pulls the ball into Andreas Pereira in between the lines. Pereira receives the ball ahead of the center backs and he slides it across the pitch into the path of Martial dropping off of Alexander Arnold. So Martial locates Brandon Williams making a run and he plays the ball back into Brandon Williams and when Williams gets it he ends up playing it back into the path of Martial ahead of Salah and what we end up seeing here is Robertson is occupied by Daniel James coming across him but from that initial play we ended up seeing Juan Basaka get ahead of Mane and Mane never looked to track the run. When Mane eventually locates that perhaps there is some danger, Juan Basak is already peeling to the back post beyond Robertson. Martial locates that, delivers across to the back post. Juan Basak is able to get onto it unmarked, and he guides the ball across the six yard box for Andreas Pereira, who also wasn't picked up, darting in between the center backs. But when Pereira gets towards the ball, he can't direct it on goal from point blank range. And that was a golden opportunity for Manchester United to level the game. When we look to one final example of Manchester United getting into Liverpool's third with relative ease, what we end up seeing here is Liverpool pressing high from the front. And once again, you have that front three, Shaw being occupied by Salah, Firmino ahead of Maguire, and Mane ahead of Lindelof. And what ends up happening here is that Maguire ends up getting the ball, and he ends up splitting Firmino and Salah to find Matic. That does ignite Oxlade-Chamberlain to step to Matic, but before he steps in, he's able to square it to Fred. Wijnaldum does step towards Fred, but so does Oxlade-Chamberlain. But when Wijnaldum looks to get the ball out of his feet, he ends up playing a pass off Oxlade-Chamberlain and into the path of Andreas Pereira, who's to the left of Henderson, not picking him up as Henderson's looking to pinch in. So now Andreas Pereira is able to turn towards goal. He has Juan Basaka breaking free down the right, Daniel James charging between the center backs and initially it was Martial darting in between Gomez and Alexander Arnold but Alexander Arnold came across which pushed Martial out wide and Andreas Pereira drives towards goal and rather than possibly sliding it to the wider players that are free in the channel he ends up opting to shoot from distance and Allison made a key save but there that's a breakdown from Liverpool's high pressing you should have Henderson sticking to Andreas Pereira and Oxlade Chamberlain if he's going to step into that challenge he has to win it if Wijnaldum's not going to push forward and get to his man in time. When you break down that first half as a whole, United shape was very good. It limited Liverpool to creating chances in open play. Liverpool had to revert to long balls over the top. And although they did force David De Gea into a save, United got into the better positions based off the powerful running from their midfield, simple defensive lapses from Liverpool's back line. And the only reason why Liverpool were ahead here was not solely based on their territorial dominance but based off the fact that Manchester United switched off from a set piece. 
However, when we look to the second half, Liverpool were much better in those opening 15 minutes. And the solution to United's 3-4-1-2 was Roberto Firmino's movement. When we look to a few examples, we see how pivotal Firmino is to the buildup of those attacks. So when we look to the first example, what we end up seeing here is Robertson on the ball, and he is closed down quickly by Juan Basaka. But what he's able to do is, it, is Robertson's able to split Juan Basaka and Fred to find Firmino dropping off Maguire. Firmino drops drops off Maguire and he ends up squaring the ball into the path of Mane who also dropped off a Lindelof and Mane locates the run of Robertson running off Juan Basaka to receive the ball in that left channel. So we have Robertson breaking beyond Juan Basaka to receive the ball in that left channel and we also locate Salah darting in between Brandon Williams and Shaw breaking towards the box. So when we have runners look to close down Robertson he's able to pull the ball back into the path of Salah behind Shaw but he can can't guide his effort on goal from point blank range and it rolls wide of the net. Shortly after that, we see David De Gea pump the ball into the left channel for Brandon Williams, and he nods the ball towards Liverpool's half, but Henderson ends up winning that header, and he nods it over Matic and Fred to Mane, who drops off of Juan Basaka. So Mane drops off Juan Basaka and Lindelof, and he plays the ball into the path of Firmino behind Matic and Fred, and Firmino's able to dart at Manchester United's backline, and he slides the ball back into the path of Mane, breaking in between Lindelof and Juan Basaka. So Mane breaks into that left channel and we see Firmino continue his run across Lindelof to receive Mane's poked pass into that left half space. Firmino does receive the ball in that zone, but Mane continues his run in between Juan Basaka and Fred to receive the cutback, but Mane only guides his effort over the net once Matic and Maguire close him down ahead of the six yard box. But once again, Firmino freeing that midfield zone, combining with Mane, but also making that run to create space for Mane to get into a good position, and another Liverpool forward wastes a golden opportunity. So when we look to the next example, this this time we focus on Manchester United building out of a goal kick. We end up seeing Maguire and Lindelof in the box with Shaw shifting out to the left hand zone. We have Mane ahead of Lindelof. We have Firmino at the edge of the box looking to block off any of De Gea's passing lanes. And we have Maguire also in left half space for Manchester United. What ends up happening there is that we end up seeing the ball shifted out to Lindelof and he is closed down by Mane and he squares it to Maguire and rather than having Firmino step to Maguire, we have Salah who is blocking off Shaw looking to close off that passing lane as he steps into the path of Maguire. So when he steps into that zone, what we see Maguire end up doing is that he pokes the ball into the path of Matic which does ignite Oxlade Chamberlain to step but it also sees Firmino step forward as he wasn't picking up any markers. So Matic instantly slides the ball into the path of Shaw. We see Brandon Williams looking to give him a passing lane, but Trent Alexander-Arnold steps forward. So Shaw receives that ball and he's closed down by Oxley chamberlain and Mo Salah, and he ends up clearing the ball into the path of Jordan Henderson. Henderson ends up winning the ball in that midfield zone, and he instantly pokes it into the path of Firmino, who is swarmed by Fred and Matic. But as he's swarmed by Fred and Matic, he instantly chests the ball down, flicks it over Fred, and it falls into the path of Henderson continuing his run towards the box and he fires an effort off the post. That's great Liverpool pressing. They closed down United in their zone which was an issue that they had in that opening half and once again it's Firmino being used as that decoy to bring runners into play and Liverpool should have doubled their lead there. Nonetheless Firmino was involved in several Liverpool key moves by dropping off into different positions in midfield and bringing his teammates into play and that helped Liverpool overcome United's 3-4-1-2 during that brief spell in that second half. Klopp eventually turned to his bench bringing on Lalana for Oxlade Chamberlain. United lacked guile and creativity in that final third and that's been one of their downfalls this season as they try to break down teams but here they got into good positions one because Liverpool were making mistakes 
and the midfield running of Fred, who was able to power them forward, but just unable to make the right decisions in the final third. And when they got into good areas, lacking the finish to beat Allison. We did see Scholzgar turn to his bench, bringing on Juan Mata and Greenwood. That did push Daniel James out into a left wing back role as Brandon Williams was sacrificed there, but we didn't really see any progression in Manchester United's play when they made that change. And we also saw Liverpool move into more of a 4-4-1-1. We saw Mane and Firmino leave the game for Fabinho and Origi. Now we had Lalana and Wijnaldum out in the wider areas to help Liverpool cope with United's wingbacks who were possibly gonna look to push forward to try and get an equalizer. And that saw Salah move up front behind Origi to add pace to Liverpool's attack as there would be space in those channels for Salah to receive the ball and Liverpool were able to kill off the game from an Allison punt to Salah which does justify Klopp making the right decision by moving to a 4-4-1-1 but it was likely to happen given the fact that United were pushing men forward and Salah didn't move up front to utilize his speed against the United backline that would possibly be disjointed once they push men forward. When you break down the game as a whole, Scholzgar got his tactics right as he disrupted Liverpool from building attacks from open play. David De Gea was forced into one quality save in that first half and arguably United did get into the better positions. The problem with United is that when they did get into good areas they lacked the personnel to make the Reds defenders pay and that was the biggest issue that United had here. From a tactical perspective the 3-4-1-2 made sense but when you make defensive mistakes that's how you get punished. In the second half, Liverpool did improve. Firmino's contributions to get his teammates into advanced positions did give United's backline a few issues and frankly Liverpool should have killed off the game. But they gave United a lifeline. United did get into some good positions in that second half once again but they were unable to make the difference and their substitutions didn't change the game. And frankly, it was only a matter of time before Liverpool got into a good position to ensure that they claimed all three points. But let me know what you guys think. With Marcus Rashford out, do you still think United has a chance of finishing in the top four? And with another big win for Liverpool, do you think anyone's gonna beat them this season in the Premier League? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And once again, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.